Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our Wednesday afternoon uh, call. It's two o'clock, the 26th of April, last Wednesday of the month. A lot of things coming to a culmination now, especially the Viva watches. So anybody who uh, wants to get into the founders package, you have until the 30th, which is Saturday. So um, make sure you get with your instructor because you'll have to get set up with them and to also get your crypto wallet through them. So make sure you give yourself enough time. Don't wait the last minute. Today, we're going to continue on, you know, during the week on Thursday nights, they've been talking about different um, aspects of the flow, step one, two, three, four, you know, which is great. And uh, at the, the last one of the later steps is uh, getting into, you know, Google AdSense. And today we're going to have uh, Larry Novell tell us more about it so he can get a better understanding of uh, what to do and what it's all about and why you're doing it. Okay. So take it away, Larry, please. Thanks, Tom. Uh, first off, just a hand uh, show of hands who do not have Google AdSense yet. Just click on reactions and put your hand up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And a half. <laughs> Roger and a half. Regina. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So we are going to go over some things about Google AdSense here. Um, I'm going to share my screen. Okay, Tom, give me co host, please. Well, let me see. I was about to add, to mention that. Wait, wait, you keep hopping around over here. Keep still. <laughs> there you go. Yes. And, and if you make me call the host well, I can kind of help control it. Okay. Everybody see my screen there? Yes, sir. Okay, so getting ready for Google AdSense. Um, you want to read this whole page. Of course, I'll share this with y'all. So uh, be sure to read through everything. I'm going to read everything that's on here, and uh, we'll get you going here. So what is Google AdSense? Google AdSense is a free tool website owners use to place Google ads on their sites. This Google advertising tool connects you, the website owner, with advertisers so, they, so that you can display ad content. So how does it work? When you register for Google AdSense, Google uses an ad auction system to place ads on your site. These ads are chosen based on your website's niche, as well as the subjects that site visitors are interested in. Then in return for hosting Google Ads, Google will pay you a commission for each click the ad receives. So we're gonna go into helpful suggestions on getting Google AdSense. Um, I did put these put links in this page so you can be able to click on it and it will take you to a Google AdSense homepage, um, the Google advertising tool, and then there'll be more links in the page. So here's some helpful suggestions on getting Google AdSense. Number one, Make sure all of your pages are original, except for your affiliate disclosures page. Keep that original. All pages need to be checked through the plagiarism part of duplichecker.com and be at least 97%. Some say 100%, but that could be impossibly um, at least 97% original. Now, 
I've noticed with DupliChecker that it's not 100% accurate, um, but just try to go with it and see what you need to change on your pages. After a while, you probably will not need to use the duplicate checker as you will be used, getting used to writing original content. Uh, you will need to create a contact us page. You know, Rory's already talked about that, but that is one of the new things that Google is requiring you have on your page to be able to get approved. And you can get your example from 1f16.com. Do not publish any of these pages. No cruelty to animal pages. This includes the Blue Scorpion page. If you have that, do not publish it. Um, if you have it, draft it. And do not publish it until after you get Google AdSense approval. No male Phoenix page. Some of you are new, you don't know what these are, but if you have them on your website, do not publish them. It's the same as A above. No gun holster pages, nothing sexual in your PBS ever. Nothing aimed at children 13 or younger in your PBS ever. Make sure you have no more than three items in your drop down menu in each category on the left menu. Make sure your menu label corresponds to your pages. Example If you have a menu item that says active wear for women, make sure it points to a page that says active wear for women. In other words, if you have an active wear for women, you don't want it pointing at your wine page doesn't make sense. And that's why Google says it has to point to the page that it says it's pointing to. Uh, make sure you have no more than 90 items in your menu. That's a WordPress limitation. Make sure there is no mention of wine in your front page posts. Make sure there is nothing in your posts that say sell or savings. Now here comes the, some people think it's the hard part, but it's not. Place ads to get people into your PBS. And then step 10, C9 above, 11, C9 above. You wanna get as many people into your website as you can before you apply for Google AdSense. That way, Google can see that people are actually coming to your website. Change the date on each page to correspond to when you started working on them. Do not change the date afterward unless you are changing it back to the original date you started that page. Uh, number 13 is highly suggested. Have your instructor check your PBS before you apply for Google AdSense. That way they can give you some helpful suggestions on getting approved the first time. Okay, now we're gonna go to category pages. Make sure your navigation is simple to use. Look at the menu to the left. It is, is it in alphabetical order? And in the drop down menus, are they also in alphabetical order? So make sure all the headings are in alphabetical order, such as what I have here. They're all in alphabetical order. Make sure the headings in your category pages are the same in all things category pages. In other words, if you have these five items on your category pages, make sure those five items are in your all things category pages and all in alphabetical order. Make sure your all things category pages are written differently than your category page. In other words, 
don't just copy your category page over to your all things category page. Um, Google will come back and say duplicate content and you don't want duplicate content. So that's why your all things category pages should be written just a little bit differently than your category page. Make sure all of your pictures have alt text attached to them as well as link, links. Now for your pages, make sure every single page has green SEO and green readability. Make sure the date is correct when starting a new page before publishing it. Have at least two pictures on each offer page, but Google actually likes three, three pictures. Make sure you have at least five to 10 original pages in your PBS, such as recipes, stories about trips you have taken, and what you love about your state. Now, you don't have to actually have those types of pages in your PBS, but Google will like, likes to see anywhere from five to 10 original pages. Uh, make sure you have at least 77 published pages in your PBS. This is bare minimum for our PBS, 67 pre-written pages and 10 original pages. Okay, general items. No scrape content on your PBS. I have a definition of scrape content here and I'm gonna click on this and show it to you. And it will take you to a page that shows you what scrape content is. They describe it down to a, a T on what scrape content is. They're also talking about sneaky redirects, um, which we don't do, but they still talk about it. Uh, spammy automatically generated content. In other words, if you're using the chat AI, do not publish any of that. Just use it as um, ideas on creating a page. It also goes through um, different items here that you might want to read through. And a lot of these are no-nos for putting on your uh, web pages. Can you actually read uh, the definition for scraped content, please? Sure. That's always been a, a question right from day one for everybody, including myself. Yeah, if I can find it here. There it is. Okay. Some site owners base their sites around content taken or scraped from other often more reputable sites. Scrape content even from high quality sources without additional useful services or content provided by your site may not provide additional value to your users. It may also constitute copyright infringement. A site may be demoted if a significant number of valid legal re removal requests have been received. Examples of abusive scrape content include sites that copy and republish content from other sites without adding any original content or value or even citing the original source. Sites that copy content from other sites modify it only slightly, for example, by submitting cinnamon, cinnamon, <laughs> cinnamon or using automated techniques and republish it. Sites that reproduce content feeds from other sites without providing some type of unique benefit to the user. 
and sites dedicated to embedding or compiling content such as videos, images, or other media from other sites without substantial added value to the user. So when you get your site, when you're new, when you're new and you get your own site, that's why you have to rewrite them because Rory wrote everything on 1f16.com and that is where your site is copied from. So in other words, your new site is actually scraped from 1f16.com. In other words, it's just copied and given to you. And that's why you have to go through and rewrite everything on your own website. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Worry said he even got notice from uh, uh, Google that uh, he had scraped content and that was his own because he makes multiple sites. So, you know, he just copied it and, you know, made it into another site and he got notification on that. Right. So it doesn't matter, even if it's your own stuff that you're copying, like you said, from catalog to all things catalog, you know, I mean, catalog category. <clears throat> right. Has to, has to be a little different. Okay. Category to all things category. Thanks. Okay, now, uh, number two, no copyrighted material on your site. So we're going to go look at the definition of copyrighted material. Okay, so copyrighted material or work of authorship means original expression that is fixed in any tangible medium or expression and subject to copyright protection under Title 17 of the U.S. Code. It is now as it now exists or as it may be amended under federal law, copyright substances um, subsets from the moment of the work's creation. Although protection may be enhanced by regulation with the United States Copyright Office, works of authorship currently include, and then they go through a whole list of different things here I'm not gonna read. So when you when you get your website, if you notice at the bottom, it is copyrighted. Okay. And then everything that you write on your PBS is now copyrighted. So in other words, in other words, it goes back to that scrape content thing. That means that somebody else can't come along to your onto your website and copy it and publish it on the internet because it's copyrighted material. Okay, do not put any music on your PBS as music most likely copyrighted. You can put any YouTube videos that belong to our affiliates as they agree for you to use their videos and their pictures. Uh, do not use pictures that have watermarks. And the reason people put watermarks on their pictures is because they own those pictures and they don't want people using those pictures. And that's why they put a watermark on it. So if for people who don't know what a watermark is, it's uh, if you have a picture, you can actually put your name uh, that is very light in the background and put it across that picture. They still want you to see the picture, but they also want you to know that it's copyrighted. Use the broken links checker. Make sure to have no broken links. Make sure your links go to where you want them to go to. So in other words, if you click on uh, the wine, a link on your wine page, you don't want it to go to, to a women's wear webpage. Make sure to have response magic on your PBS and make sure it is working properly. Um, I always have problems with response magic, but I'm learning more about it. It uh, has taken a little bit of time, but we'll see how it works from in the future. 
uh, in YouTube, subscribe and watch all the Google AdSense videos. And I have a link here that will take you to uh, Google AdSense YouTube page. And you can watch all the videos that Google AdSense has there. And they give a lot of good suggestions on how to get Google AdSense and keep Google AdSense. And the reason I say that is because Google can come back and view your web page again. And if there's a lot of scraped content or there's violations of Google AdSense policy, they can take Google AdSense away from you. And you don't want that because it's very hard to get it back. Place ads to get people in your PBS. You want as many people in there as you can to show Google you have a good website and there's good content on your website. Okay, after you apply, when you apply to Google AdSense, you will need to add the code that Google gives you to your PBS widgets. Add the code to the left content sidebar and the right content sidebar three, ta three times in each sidebar. Add the code one time to each footer. You have more than one footer, so you can add it as many footers as you have. Once again, place ads to get people to your PBS. After Google gives you that code, you're going to wait and wait and wait some more. When Google tells you it will take up to two weeks to get approval, it will take two weeks for approval or disapproval, whatever the case may be. Relax after that. You can now add new pages to your PBS during the wait time. However, make sure the page is complete before you publish it, or better yet, draft them until approval. Never, never, never click on ads that are in your PBS. Never, never, never ask your friends or family to click on the ads in your PBS. Google calls that fraud and will ban you for life. That should be underlined as an emphasis. After you get Google AdSense, Google AdSense will send you a new code. You're going to watch Rory's YouTube video, and I have the specific video here. Um, it does go through um, some other things before he gets to the Google AdSense part of it. Uh, because he's helping Tony with doing some other things here. I'm going to pause that. So he tells he he's walking Tony through where to put her codes at, and that's exactly where you want to put yours. Okay. Once again, this is a big thing: placing ads to get people to your PBS. And then number four, make money, be happy. Never break Google's rules or policies. This might get you banned and worse, you might, get, might not get Google AdSense back. Okay, here's the big thing. If you get denied by Google AdSense, if you apply all the above, you should get approved. However, if you are denied, don't get discouraged. I actually was denied five times and I finally got it on the sixth time. Don't be discouraged. But um, if you are denied, read why you were denied. Then go to the Google Help Center as it will tell you why you were denied. They will not tell you specifically what is wrong. Uh, yes, they there will be cate general categories, 
read everything that they say and apply what they say. Do not submit your site again for at least two weeks. Google wants to see you working on your site. If you submit again too soon, Google will think that you didn't do anything to your site. Make sure you are not breaking Google policies. Read the Google Policy Center rules. And I have both of these linked. I have the Google, Google Help Center. Okay, they tell you how to get started, accounts management, manage ads, payments, revenue optimization, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then the Google Policy Center. So there's a ton of policies. On the right-hand side, they tell you how to fix the policy issues. Now, like I said, they don't tell you specifically what's wrong. They, they, they're they real general about what they say to you or, you know, what the problem is. Um, they could say duplicate content, and then you'll have to go through your web page and look to see if you have duplicate content. And like I said, the the category pages and the all category pages are real easy to duplicate. So you gotta be careful about that. Uh, reasons Google will deny your website, your Google AdSense account is not filled out. So you actually have to fill out a form on Google to tell them how they have to pay you. In other words, you're putting in your social security number. If you don't put that in, they will not pay you and they will not approve you. Um, there's, you know, your your physical address, not a PO box, but a physical address. Um, they will ask you items such as your full name, your address in the state you live in, your phone number with country code, area code. If you don't know your country's code, check it here. They want to know your social security number. They want to know the bank account that they pay you to. Uh, there may be others, other new ones since I wrote this, but fill it out completely. Uh, like I said, Google will send you a reason why it was denied, such as alcohol sell or mis misuse. They do not, will not approve your website if you have alcohol on your website. But be aware, we do not sell wine. We pr promote a wine membership. Scraped content, we went over that. Uh, duplicate content, we went over that. But there's tons of stuff that they could come back with saying, what's wrong with your website? Okay, so duplicate content, here's an example. I have my arts and entertainment on my um, category page. It still has the same heading, of cartoon animation cells on both of them. But if you look at it, they are written differently. That's what Google wants to see. They, they don't want you to just copy this and put it over into your all things arts and entertainment category. After you're, you're approved, well, that's up to you if you just want to copy it and put it over. But like I said, be aware, they can always come back into your site and ding you for duplicate content. Um, here's, here's something that Google wants to see. There is personal items on your site. By personal, I mean experiences you have had in your life. I wrote a gone fishing page it was about a time that I had in the Boy Scouts in a football game in the mountains. I also wrote pages on recipes. 
recipes are probably the easiest thing to write about because you already know what goes into them. I also wrote about the state I live in and what is cool about my state and why I like living here. You should have at least 10 personal pages in your PBS. Google loves stories. They love new content out there. Stories about you, your recipes, your adventures, anything about your state that you have explored, your military expense, uh, experiences and the list can go on and on. Last thing is join Google AdSense YouTube channel because they give you tons of ideas. Okay, so that's my presentation. Um, do we have any questions? Larry, that was excellent. Uh, could you, you do me a favor? And we've got a lot of new people here today. So can you share a screen and show them how to place the initial code in their widgets? Yes, I can. Thanks. I think that would be helpful. Okay, I'm gonna, let me close some of these uh, tabs here. Okay, so I'm gonna open up my dashboard here. Okay, we're gonna to go to appearance and then we're gonna to go to widgets. This is in your dashboard. So go to appearance and widgets. Okay, so in my widgets, I have quite a few widgets here. And the first one is actually the response magic widget, which you will should be getting into here pretty quick if you haven't already. Uh, right here is my Google AdSense widget. And what you're going to do is you're going to add a block and we're going to browse for it is, give me just a sec here. Custom HTML. Okay, so when I click on that, it gives me a, a new custom HTML box. And you're, this is the, the first code that Google is gonna send you via email. And you're gonna place this into this box, which was the wrong one. Okay, and it's as simple as that. You just copy it from your email and put it into the widget. Okay, then when you get the Google AdSense itself, they're gonna send you another code that is this one here. And that is how you actually place your ads onto your website. So when I go back to my web page, and I'll show you where it 
And of course, my this bar is in the way here. Give me just a second to see if I can move this bar here. I'm going to stop share for a second here. Okay, I'm going to come back in and share again. Okay, are you able to see that? Yep. Okay. So I don't actually have any ads on my post page. It but if you see, yeah, if you see to the right, there is an ad over here. So when you start placing your ads, it's gonna ask you what kind of ads you want and where you're gonna place them. So if you notice, there's ads on the right-hand side of the page and there's ad, an ad down here at the bottom. You can actually minimize this ad. But if you notice, there's no ad actually on the post yeah, no. page okay but there's another ad over here they're all the same ads but i don't have any ads in the post but if we go to say for example beauty and cosmetics there's another ad never What's click on the me? ad i'm sorry same ad again <laughs> yeah, same ad. <laughs> so you just want to close the ad. This is my um, category page. And I'm going to go to Curse Cosmetics. Hmm. And if you notice right here, there's now an ad in the middle of my page. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to copy that add widget, go into your page, and we're going to, this is the, the script for the ad right here. I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to put another custom HTML and paste the ad. And we're going to update it. And then we're going to view it. And you'll see that I'll now have two ads. So here's one ad right here. Takes a second to pop up there. OK, so there's one ad. And here's the second one right here, the one I just pasted. So you can paste that code anywhere into your website that you want. I would not suggest, I mean, I mean I've seen a lot of pages that have um, ads in the posts, but I think that kind of distracts from your post yeah. because you want people to, to read this and, and see what everything is all about and not be distracted by it by an ad because you know you got ads over here on the right you got them down here at the bottom uh, below your uh, response magic and this is actually uh, the footer down here and there's no ads in here but it just depends on where you want to put them um, cooking food and wine uh, we're going to go to, say, like Red Net Barbecue Sauce. And I don't have an ad on that particular page, but I have them all along over here on the sides. Both sides, down here, at the bottom, 
And sometimes you get overwhelmed because all these ads are the same. I mean, the, this is a wig ad site, wig ad site, shoe ad site. Uh, Michael Kors, uh, believe it or not, that is in our Savings Highway Global. So it kind of looks like, you know, when I'm in my Savings Highway Global and I search for something that has nothing to do with my website, I don't even have my website open when I go into Savings Highway Global. And I was looking for shoes. Well, now Michael Kors has shoes and a shoe ad on my website. So Google's very smart. They know exactly what you're looking at and what kind of ads to place on your website. So it doesn't have anything to do with uh, redneck lipstick, but that doesn't matter. I mean, they're still putting the ads on your sites. Anybody clicks on it, you get paid. Okay, I'm going to open up my uh, Google AdSense. Maybe if this bar would move here. Okay, let's try that again. Mm -hmm. I don't like that bar. <laughs> yeah, I know. It always gets away. But for those of you who, who don't know, whenever you do a screen share, it'll actually give you a bar either at the top or the bottom of the, of the screen. And no matter what you're doing, it always seems though it's in the way. Yeah, um, so I it know, does. Move it, yeah, yeah, always. Okay, so this is the Google AdSense if nobody's ever seen it. It tells you all kinds of cool stuff. It says let Google ad uh, Google place ads for you. You have to have your website on and make sure that I have auto ads turned on because I don't want to have to sit there and pick the ads that are put on my our website. So I just let Google put on whatever they want. Um, the same thing basically is just saying what what the name of your website is and that it's approved, um, authorized to put ads on my website. It goes through privacy and messaging, tells you all about privacy and all that. Uh, a lot of this is Greek to me, but um, mm -hmm. if you want to read all this stuff, that's cool. Um, it tells you about brand safety. shows you the uh, ad review center. Takes a little bit of time to come up here. But it tells all kinds of, of cool stuff. So yeah. these ads that are coming up are ads that actually go onto my website today. Tomorrow, it will change. Um, it will also um, tell you who is advertising on your website. You can actually click on these because it's not on your site. So say, for example, um, we'll just do the first one, Helpwire. It has a link to the web page that is um, advertising on your page. Looks like this is an, an attorney website. So they're advertising on your page for getting an attorney. Um, next one is Sofina Active. It shows you what kind of clothing they have. These are people that are advertising on your website. Okay, then um, you have blocking controls. If you don't like this lawyer advertising on your website, you can block them. Why you would do that, I don't know, because that's money in your pocket. And more uh, or less, yeah, sorry, the other reason why you might want to use that, you know, so 
we're we're um, um doing it for example you know we're doing a, a wine club so if you find there's an ad that's advertising another wine club that's why you might want to block it or yeah. or or, right. they, or or if you have one that's advertising a uh, travel well you might want to block that because we do savings on global that would be an right. example of why you would want to do block it block it right so here's a uh an advertiser look what they're advertising why would you want this ad on your uh, on your wine page, you wouldn't. So let's block them. You know, they may pay you very well, but that's competition. You want people to buy your wine from you or your your wine membership. Membership, <laughs> Right. Um, here's culture candy over here. You might see that quite a bit on people's website. That would probably be something that you want to block because that's in competition with Savings Highway Global. Um, it gives you reports. And it will show you, like for last month, it tells you how much you earn for that particular month. Um, it gives you a graph of how many, like how many people clicked on your, a particular ad. And that's how much you got paid for it. Now, some of these are really low. And depending on who's um, advertising on your webpage, I mean, one click for one ad could earn you up to $50. Um, but then again, it depends on how many people are clicking on that ad off of your web page. So the advertisers know how many people are clicking on that ad, and the more people that click on it, the more you could get paid. Um, there's so much stuff in here that it's hard to go through everything. Uh, probably the best thing to look at, though, is the policy center. Um, this is just taking you through the policy center, what all the policies are, um, kind of shows you how to fix things. So it's it's really cool. But probably the best thing to do would be, like I said, go through um, the the paper that I just wrote or presented and I'm going to put that in the chat. And we're going to share that. Anyone with the link? Copy link. I'm going to stop sharing here. Okay, there's the link in the chat. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Tom, do you have anything? Or it uh, looks like Melissa has a question. Yes, thank you. Going back to your PBS and your two posts. Um, I had mine set up like you do with new stuff first and then the welcome to community. And I wanted the welcome first. So I made it sticky, but is that going to be a problem for Google AdSense that it's not alphabetical? I wouldn't think so. Um, you could you could put it really, you know, Rory says only two posts when you, before you get Google AdSense. Um, but I wouldn't think right. that that would really matter. Okay, no, thanks. You're talking about your home category, right, Melissa? Correct. That's uh, something that is more or less uh, talking to the people about uh, telling them your, you know, your philosophy, what your blog is all about, you know. Right. And it's just a matter of that, that since it's not a category and they're not usually 
um, products and services you put in there, even though you can, it doesn't have to be, you know, in alphabetical order. It's of interest to the people and let them know what type of a blog that you have there and what they can look forward to in uh, when going through the categories. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put that link into the uh, evolution chat. So okay. if you need it, I'll have reference to it. Any, Any other reference, questions? In reference to pictures that you had mentioned, Larry, on the mm -hmm. pages, first of all, for Google Essence especially, they would really like to see about 900 words on your pages. Okay, if you when you're building new pages, just think about that. Nine good average is 900 words. As far as pictures go, you could figure it as one picture per 300 words. Actually, I'd prefer two pictures for 900 words. You know, because right. remember, we partner with Google and we partner for content. Not pictures. Pictures just a little addition that you can. It's like an afterthought you can put in there, even though it's part of the SEO Yoast SEO. And the alt tag. Does everybody know what an alt tag is? If you don't, raise your hand. Larry mentioned that before. Great. Yeah, you raise your hand in the in the reactions yeah michael as far as the alt you want to know about the alt tag right you can unmute michael yes yeah well a lot of uh computers sometimes uh, a lot of times uh the computers won't show a picture, but they'll be able to show the text. And so the alt tag is on the right side of the picture. When you click on a picture in your administrative site, when you're building your page, if you click on the picture on the right-hand side, there'll be a white box. It'll be in the setting part of it. So on the top right, the little box will be the setting. You click on the settings and over on the right, you'll see a square box. And in that square box, you want to put in your keyword or key phrase and also describe what the picture, uh, you know, two or three words or so of what the picture actually is of, like a small boy eating ice cream or a homeschooling a picture, you know, whatever it is, you know. So sometimes people can't see the pictures clearly but they can see the text and that's another you know purpose for having the alt text alt stands for alternative text alternative to the picture so you have the picture or you have the alternative of the picture which would be the text does that make sense michael yeah thank you for that okay great any other questions Got a lot of experts here, which is great. Everybody's learning. That's what we want. Come in week after week. Perfect. I just want to thank Larry for that. It's uh, I can see step one, step two. If I don't see it, it doesn't click in my mind. Every time I looked at my pages, I said, okay, I think I'm almost ready. And then I look at it again and say, no, I'm not. And I've been through that. No, I'm not. Yes, I am. No, I'm not. Yes, I am. <laughs> I have a one, two, three that I can click check, check, check. <laughs> so thank you, Larry. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Excellent. Super job. A lot of good information. And remember that this is after you have modified all your pages. Okay. Yes. The and, home and get, category. Go ahead, Larry. Get your instructor involved. That one. The main thing I talked about was um, before you apply, get your instructor in there into your site and have them check it. Um, 
I would say that your instructor would probably want to have Google AdSense already uh, before they can contrit can uh, critique your website. Mm -hmm. So uh, <laughs> that would probably be a good idea for them to have it first. Yeah, and there is a way, and I don't want to really go into it now because it's almost the up, you know, three o'clock. But I was working with one of my other students yesterday, and um, I had him put his site side by side. That way, his website was on the left, and 1F16 was on the right. So when you can actually see your site side by side, you can see the changes in the wording. And you can see how much yours is different than the original template instead of going back and forth, back and forth. But right now, it's probably at the learning uh, early stages. It's just as well. You want to do that when you're doing your site, modifying it. Just have the template up also right side by side. So you can click on the template, see how you did, see if you changed it and click back to yours. Then right. way you, that way you'll know you're not copying, you know, totally that you are doing a good job. And like Larry said, yeah, about 97%, 95%, yeah, modification is what you want to shoot for. As far as the pictures goes, the pictures are optional. You can change the pictures from left side to right side, right side to left side. You never want to have the pictures by themselves. You always want it surrounded by text. And then, of course, you can always change the pictures, too. But that's after the content. Right. Any okay. other questions, guys? Anything going? OK, thanks, Tom. Excellent. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Good job, Larry. Excellent, excellent. excellent. Thanks Larry, for Jeff. I will, I will amaze you guys next week. You just wait. Awesome. Did I amaze you today? You no. absolutely did. Yeah. I, I don't know if I'll be able to <laughs> top this, but it's going to be good. You're always Sorry. amazing. Yeah, yeah. Th this, this is excellent, today, Larry. Thank you so much. It's going to help a lot of people, for sure. Thank you. I mean, you know, and you know, like um, 